Our ancestors all around the world told stories and folklore about a time before recorded history. A time when monsters roamed the lands and creatures that we only find in mythology and fables inhabited our forests. These stories often tell of dwarves living in giant tree trunks, or magical trees capable of healing the land. These forests even contained giant mushrooms that other creatures called home and made for a landscape quite like that of a fairy tale novel. Sometimes we forget in our modern world that trees can get absolutely massive. When the early settlers arrived in America, they found entire forests of giant chestnuts with circumferences of 100 to 200 feet around, and giant cypress trees measuring up to 200 feet high. And then there's the giant sequoia and redwood pines of the west coast that are the last remnants of the giant trees that once spanned the entire globe. And they say there have been ones that were cut down that would have broken all the records of the tallest trees we have recorded today, which is a 380 foot tall sequoia in California. Imagine trees reaching as tall as 500, even a thousand feet maybe. Left alone under the proper conditions, these trees will continue to grow for their entire lifespan and will live for tens of thousands of years. The oldest tree we have recorded today is 5,000 years old, and we would have older ones if they weren't destroyed by natural disasters and logging. We have ancient stories of giant forests going as far back as the oldest known texts in the Sumerian tablets. The Epic of Gilgamesh as well as the Old Testament in the Bible speaks of giant cedars existing in Lebanon, and they still use this symbol for the country even though these trees have been long since wiped out. We find stories of the great world tree of Yggdrasil in Norse mythology. Many traditions around the world have sacred groves and revere certain trees as holy or magical. The oak tree was sacred to the Druids. The Indian sages meditated under holy banyan trees. In Japan, the Shinto temples are built with sacred trees where, through a ritual process, they invoke a spirit known as the Kami spirit to inhabit the tree. Basically, any culture who can trace its roots back to a shamanistic or animistic tradition venerates these trees and understands the important role they play on this planet. They say that the forests were once full of these sacred giants, and it was these cultures' duty to watch over the land and keep things in balance. And when these trees were destroyed, that balance fell into disrepair. There have been recent studies done observing trees' ability to communicate with one another. Scientists have determined that trees will use chemical signals to alert the rest of the trees in the forest of things like danger, disease, bad weather, invading insects, and any other changes to the ecosystem. Then these signals get picked up by the oldest and largest trees in the forest. These trees act as the elders carrying the experience and knowledge of how to manage the forest. These giant old growth trees receive these signals from the rest of the woods and allocate nutrients and other helpful chemicals to the younger trees or trees at higher risk in order to keep the forest in perfect equilibrium. This is why old growth forests are so healthy and diverse, and why it takes so long to get to that perfect self-sustaining forest. These old giant trees sustain the land by literally sending out nutrients to other plants. So when a forest has a massive 400 to 500 foot tree, it's much healthier and can support a much wider range of species, leading to things like extremely specialized traits in animals, or medicinal properties in plants that are found nowhere else on earth like we find in the Amazon rainforest, for example. The mechanism that's thought to be at use that allows these trees to do this is the intricate fungal networks that intertwine in every root in the forest. These webs of mushrooms are so advanced that they can pick up signals from trees and make the appropriate response much like the neural networks of a brain telling muscles how to move. These fungal networks sprouted massive giant mushrooms at one point too. We find fossil evidence of these giant mushrooms, and it's likely they existed much more recent in the record than they previously thought due to the difficulty in fossilizing soft tissue like that of a mushroom. In fact, it's extremely hard to make mushrooms go extinct. Just ask the DEA how many pounds of magic mushrooms grows wild on the west coast. The answer is millions. Actually, I find what scientists tell us happened very interesting. Apparently, the giant strains of mushroom spores likely still exist in many places around the world, and the potential could be lying in everyday mushrooms to get to giant sizes, but the conditions need to be absolutely perfect for these things to happen. And they say these conditions don't exist anywhere on Earth anymore. Mushroom scientists like Paul Stamets have pointed out that extremely rare species of fungi are present only in certain regions of old growth forests. This must mean that the conditions for these giant mushrooms must only exist in these even older growth forests, possibly due to lack of these giant trees. In fact, one of the last old growth forests in America, the largest living organism on earth exists, and it's a giant fungus living completely underground in Oregon spanning nearly 2,500 acres. I would venture to say that if the conditions were right and if this forest was left to grow for several thousand years, it might be a source of giant mushrooms that we find in the fossil record that once filled these ancient magical forests we hear about in legend and folklore.